Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Megan Balding, and I'm joined today by Professor Mike Grumman. Uh, and our focus of today's webinar, our Discover Viterbi webinar, will be on astronautical engineering. So um, thank you again for joining us. And without further ado, we'll get started. All right. So before we begin the formal presentation, I do just want to provide you with a Quick uh, couple of housekeeping items. Uh, one item is that we will be sending out a copy of the slides of, pre of the presentation um, following today's webinar. There is a lot of really great information, a lot of resources to touch base on um, after the webinar, so we want to make sure you're getting all of that information. So please do keep an eye out on your email for a link to the presentation slides. Additionally, we want to encourage you to ask questions during today's session uh, by using the Q&A panel in WebEx. So at any point in time, if you have a question, please uh, be sure to send that over the Q&A. And we will have extra time at the end of the session to answer any questions. So um, as they come up, please feel free to send them over. For today's program, we'll quickly be going over the University of Southern California and the Viterbi School of Engineering. I'll talk about Dennett Viterbi, which is our online delivery method, briefly. Uh, we'll get into our enrollment options and tuition and fee structure for all of our master's level programs. And then um, at that point in time, the presentation will be passed over to Professor Grutman, who will be discussing in detail our Master of Science in Astronautical Engineering. He'll go over the department and a program overview, as well as the application criteria. And then like I mentioned on the last, si uh, last slide, we will have time at the end of the session for questions. So please do uh, be sure to send in over any questions that you may have. If you're not familiar with the University of Southern California, uh, these are some images from our campus here in Los Angeles. We are the oldest private university in the Western United States, founded in 1880. We have about 47,000 students, about 20,000 undergraduates, and 27, uh, just over 27,000 graduate students. We have over 4,300 full-time faculty and a diverse student population with students coming from all 50 states and over 100 countries. The campus itself is located in Los Angeles. We're just south of downtown LA, uh, which really does make this an ideal location um, for connecting with a lot of the industry that is uh, uh, located right here in the greater LA area. Um, for those of you in the aerospace and defense industry, uh, you probably are familiar with El Segundo. That's about a 30 to 45 minute drive from campus, uh, which really makes uh, collaborations with, uh, with the industry there in El Segundo, the aerospace and defense, major aerospace and defense companies, um, a really great opportunity for us, as well as also other industry, including um, uh, the growing tech industry that is uh, growing right here um, by the beach, what we call Silicon Beach. Um, which is, again, just about, uh, well, I say everything is 30 to 45 minutes unless you're in traffic, which, you know, then it could be two days away. So uh, in terms of the Viterbi School of Engineering, we have eight academic departments that are located within the Viterbi School. Uh, Professor Grutman will be discussing our Department of Astronautical Engineering uh, within his uh, presentation, and we'll get into more detail within that department. Uh, for in terms of our faculty, we have 189 tenure track faculty, 16 of whom are um, members of the National Academy of Engineering. We have um, over 60 faculty that have received the National Science Foundation Career National and Presidential Young Investigator Awards as well. In terms of alumni within the Viterbi School of Engineering, we have over 76,000 engineering alumni located throughout the world. Uh, our student population consists of just over 2,500 undergraduate students and 5,700 graduate students. Our graduate student population is, of course, our master's students, which is our on-campus and online student population, as well as, of course, our doctoral students. In terms of research, uh, if you're interested in learning more about uh, the research going on overall within the Viterbi School, I encourage you to visit our website, viterbischool.usc.edu. You'll learn more about our 35 research centers uh, and the types of research going on here at the Viterbi School. In fact, uh, within the Viterbi School, we have over $204 million in research expenditures annually. So as you can imagine, there's a lot going on, and I encourage you to explore our website for more information. 
This slide just quickly goes over some of our recent rankings by U.S. News & World Report. USC Viterbi has consistently ranked a top graduate engineering program overall uh, in terms of um, best engineering graduate schools by U.S. News & World Report. Uh, in terms of our online graduate engineering program rankings, we are currently the number one uh, online computer information technology program. That's our computer science program. We've consistently been ranked the number one program in this area. I believe it's for seven years now. And uh, we are number two uh, for our online graduate engineering program overall. So this is across all 40 of our programs that are available online. We are uh, had the same rankings in these areas uh, as they speak to veterans. So for any individuals that may be joining us that are active duty military or veterans, um, we are always excited that our rankings um, in this area are so high because we do feel that um, the flexibility that our online program offers really does work for the um, for the active duty professional. In terms of the USC Viterbi School of Engineering, we have a strong international reputation for excellence. A lot of this has to do with not only the exciting research that's going on within the Viterbi School of Engineering, but also some of the amazing work that's being done by our alumni. As I mentioned, we have over 76,000 engineering alumni. These individuals are part of what we call the Trojan Family Network. Uh, the Trojan Family Network consists of all USC alumni. I believe at this point in time we have over 200,000 alumni located throughout the world. Within the Viterbi School, we have unique engineering program offerings available online, on site, and on campus. Uh, in, terms of, in terms of the programs that we'll be discussing today, uh, our master's and graduate certificate programs are available both on campus uh, and online. So we'll be going over both of those options and, and how you can pursue your degree programs in that manner. Of course, our doctoral programs are also available here on USC's campus, as well as our bachelor's degree programs. We also offer short courses and customized programs. These are part of our continuing education area. This is where we can also offer programs on site at an organization if customized training is needed within your, within your area or department. Um, I've mentioned graduate certificates. Uh, Professor Grutman will be getting into that in more detail. A graduate certificate is about half the units of a master's degree. It is master's level coursework, uh, but again, is um, only about half the units required uh, to complete that program. So we'll be discussing that as well. In terms of the research going on here within the Viterbi School, we are not only considered a leader in research within the university uh, here within USC, but also um, within the United States. And a lot of that has to do with our highly interdisciplinary research environment. Um, as I mentioned, there's over 35 research centers, and I won't be able to go into all the different and diverse research areas, but we do have work being done currently in robotics, software engineering, sensor networks, vision sciences, automated construction, and photonics, amongst much more. And uh, Professor Grutman will be getting into some of those areas as they uh, relate to astronautical engineering shortly. Those re the research areas, I'm sorry, that relate to astronautical engineering. Quickly, I'd like to discuss our course delivery methods. So uh, if you choose to pursue a master's degree here at USC Viterbi, you have the op option to take courses here on USC's campus. And generally, that's the option our full-time students pursue, students that are taking classes um, full-time here on USC's campus, which means they're taking around three classes in a semester and about a, taking about a year and a half to two years to complete their degree. In terms of the other available option, we do have the ability for you to pursue your degree online uh, via Dead at Viterbi. This is our online delivery. Most students pursuing this option are working full time, which means they're taking around one to two classes in a semester and are therefore taking a little bit longer, about two and a half to three years on average to complete their degrees. So I'll briefly speak to Dennett Viterbi and how it works, uh, just so you can have an idea of the options you have in terms of pursuing your degree program here at USC. Uh, the Viterbi School uses a state-of-the-art proprietary web-based delivery system that enables students from around the world to access classes live, on-demand, and by download. Um, so the, 
the way that USC's online delivery is structured is that you as a student are registering in classes that are happening that semester on campus. These are the same lectures that our on-campus students are viewing. You just have the flexibility of viewing them on your own schedule, whether that's in the evenings or on the weekends, whenever it works best for you. You are following the same syllabus and have the same deadlines as your on-campus counterparts. You have the ability to interact with professors and peers, um, utilizing a number of different tools. Homework is submitted electronically according to the same course deadlines, and exams are done at Proctor Testing Centers near your home or office. If you happen to live in the greater Los Angeles area, then you would come to USC to take your exam. Um, otherwise, you would work with our exam uh, exams coordinator, coordinator to identify your local proctored center. The following chart just quickly goes over some of the similarities and differences between um, pursuing your program here on USC's campus versus from a distance. The one thing I just want to mention is that the program admission requirements are going to be exactly the same regardless of how you choose to pursue your degree program. So we'll be going over those admission criteria um, shortly. But uh, when we go over that, you'll see that there is no difference in how you apply. It is the same admission criteria, and you're held to the same standards, regardless of your intended delivery. Differences come in in how you, of course, watch your lectures. In terms of our online students, you have the ability to either watch the class live as it's happening here on USC's campus, or you can view the course archive um, at a later point where you're able to view the recorded lectures and download any course documents. One thing I want to mention is in terms of our on-campus students, um, these if you are enrolled in a class that is available to our Den of Aturbe student population, then you also have access to those course archives, which can be utilized for review purposes. We find that our students um, appreciate the fact that they're able to log in to course archives later on in the semester when they are you know, approaching a midterm or final exam and are looking for opportunities to review previous lectures from the semester. As I mentioned, assignments are submitted electronically if you're pursuing the program online, but they are done according to the same course deadlines. Exams are done on the same schedule, but at proctored locations if necessary. As I mentioned earlier, most of our Den of Aturbe students are working full time, so they're taking a reduced course load. But ultimately, all students are required to complete the same number of units to uh, finalize their program, and they need to complete that program with a cumulative GPA of a 3.0 or higher. So ultimately, the diploma you receive is going to be exactly the same regardless of your delivery method. It does not indicate online um, anywhere on the diploma or on your transcripts. This image just gives you an idea of uh, one of our standard classrooms. I think it uh, Den of Aturbe classrooms, I should say. I think it gives you uh, a clear view of, um, you know, how integrated the online and on-campus experience really is. We have live camera operators that are located in every classroom that capture um, via the many cameras in the classroom what's happening. Um, in this case, the faculty member is sitting at the front um, utilizing the overhead camera to make notes uh, that are then easily captured by a distance audience. There's also uh, smart boards in all of our classrooms. So if um, calculations or um, extended notes are being taken by the faculty member, these can easily be captured and available to you for download following this session. And this is just another quick image of a faculty member utilizing the smart board. You have the ability when viewing your lectures to um, view the thumbnail of the video or increase the size of the video to full screen. Um, there's a lot of flexibility within the system and how you utilize it uh, to meet your needs. There's just some quick items I wanted to discuss in terms of um, those individuals that may be interested in Den of Aturbe, which is our online delivery. Limited status enrollment allows qualified candidates to begin coursework before formal admission to a degree program. To qualify for limited status enrollment, you need to have a cumulative undergraduate GPA of 3.0 or higher, and your degree must be in engineering, math, or a hard science from a regionally accredited institution. If you meet that requirement, as well as any background requirements for your intended course of study, then you can get started as early as this summer semester as a limited status student. 
This enables you to begin taking classes towards a degree program while you prepare your application. You can take a maximum of 12 units uh, that can be applied towards your degree program once admitted, but it's important to note that limited status does not guarantee admission to a degree program, and all students must apply for formal admission to a degree program in order to um, ultimately be admitted to that program. There is a link here in terms of how you can get started with limited status, which will send you over to the Dennett Viterbi profile, which needs to be completed. But if you're interested in getting started this summer, I encourage you to visit this soon and complete the uh, form so that you can get approved and registered in your classes for the uh, May start. Tuition deferment program is a great program, a uh, great opportunity to um, avoid out-of-pocket expenses if your company is paying 75 to 100 percent of your tuition. Students that are being supported by their company can defer the upfront payment of tuition until after the semester is over. So again, you really avoid having to take any out-of-pocket expenses um, throughout the program itself. In terms of tuition, the current um, overview is of our uh, tuition rates for the 2018-2019 academic year. The per unit cost is $2,005. Uh, most of our astronautical engineering courses are three units in length, so the cost of your course is going to be $6,015. Um, there are additional fees depending on whether you're taking your classes here on USC's campus or online, and you can find a full breakdown of those fees by visiting the link provided. All right, so the following are the general application deadlines for all of our master's degree programs. Um, for fall of 2019, technically the posted application deadline was January 15th, but if you are interested in applying, we do have a deadline extension available for Dennett Viterbi applicants. Uh, you can email us for more information. And I apologize, that should say spring 2020 as the next available semester to apply. Uh, that would be to start classes in January of 2020. The deadline there will be for September 15th, so um, you do have a little bit more time to get all of your application materials in. One item I'd like to note, for all of our um, semesters, if you are interested in pursuing the program on campus, uh, there is a early scholarship deadline um, in order to be considered for scholarship consideration, which is August 31st uh, for spring of 2020 and December 15th for fall of 2020. For Dennett Viterbi students, there is also a scholarship opportunity available for you, uh, but that is uh, a separate process that you can apply to after you have been informally admitted to a degree program. All right, so the following are just some quick links in order to get started, um, whether you're interested in between pursuing classes on campus. We encourage you to visit USC's campus to take a tour um, and learn a little bit more about our programs here. We do have a couple of um, available opportunities in the fall to come to campus for formal sessions, including our preview day that usually happens in early November each year. Uh, in terms of starting your application, uh, the application um, link is here. As I mentioned, um, the deadline for fall of 2019 for most programs has passed, but if you're interested in pursuing it as a Den of Viterbi applicant, we may be able to provide an extension. Um, otherwise, the spring application will be available. Um, it's usually available starting in July. If you're interested in starting as a limited status student via Den of Viterbi, you still have time um, and you can get started as early as this summer. All right, so without further ado, I would like to transition the presentation over to Professor Mike Grumman. Professor Grumman is the department chair for ast the astronautical department. He is uh, also the program director for the Master of Science in Astronautical Engineering and a professor of astronautical engineering. His research in astronautics includes spacecraft and space mission design, space physics, space instrumentation and sensors, space plasmas, spacecraft technologies, rocketry, propulsion, and orbital debris. He's authored and, or, and co-authored, I'm sorry, more than 300 scholarly publications, including four books. And there's, uh, once we send out these slides, there is a link to those so you can get a little bit more of an idea of um, his many accomplishments. So, Professor Grutman, thank you so much for joining us today, and I will pass the presentation on to you now to learn a little bit more about our astronautical engineering uh, program offerings. Thank you, Megan, and greetings, greetings, everybody. So, what we will do today, we will uh, review the 
our program and a little bit more about the department, about faculty, the students, and the typical uh, questions that students ask uh, those who are interested to pursue the degree. So we'll talk about uh, the faculty research areas, uh, then we'll f concentrate on the degree, Master of Science in Astronautical Engineering. Uh, we also have a graduate certificate. Uh, if you have questions, please ask. Then we'll talk about students, coursework, and criteria for applications. Now, on this uh, slide, uh, you will see my contact information. You can also contact me directly, sending me email. And uh, the, another link uh, below is uh, articles about the program. We have. Uh, presentations at the major astronautical or space conferences and also an article in ACTA Astronautica. This is a mainstream science journal in space technology. So there, there are articles uh, there about the program. It's a little bit more than you want to know, uh, but uh, a lot of discussion there about, uh, about uh, national educational landscape in space engineering, what are different programs we have in the United States and where our program uh, is uh, with respect to peers, and also why do we have a separate program in space engineering? Again, this is a little bit more beyond the topic uh, for our meeting today, but uh, for those of you who are interested in the details, you may want to explore that. So the department was formally established in uh, 2004, 15 years ago. Uh, it was based on the specialization in astronautical engineering or space engineering that was within the aerospace department. And uh, this specialization started 25 years ago. I served as the founding chairman of the department and uh, now unfortunately I'm serving again uh, as the chairman. It's a lot of uh, not very exciting administrative stuff that I have to, but uh, faculty does uh, service and uh, we rotate and serve in this capacity. So uh, we are relatively new as an independent department from 2004, 15 years, and we developed all the programs, degrees, and we are responsible for space engineering in the School of Engineering, in the Viterbi School of Engineering at USC. So uh, we have a full set of programs uh, covering Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science minor, Master of Science, Engineer, PhD, and Graduate Certificate. Now, uh, our Bachelor of Science program is not a topic for today's uh, webcast, uh, but uh, it's a vibrant program. It's relatively small, but vibrant. A lot of uh, future rocket scientists are coming to us. PhD program is also thriving, but PhD is primarily one-on-one -on -one interaction, mentoring with a faculty member. Master of Science is the flagship program of the department, and this is one of the largest national programs in the United States in this area. And I will talk more about this, uh, about the statistics uh, of the program and the national education in the United States. We are a relatively small department. On the left side of this slide, there is a full-time faculty, tenure track and research faculty, tenured faculty and research faculty in the department. So I'm uh, currently chairman and I'm also director of Master of Science program. When I am not a chairman, I'm, I continue to direct master's program, so I have been doing this for the last 25 years. Uh, so my other colleagues, they share responsibilities for undergraduate program, for PhD program, and also we have uh, several other faculty members. Uh, what is uh, interesting, uh, one of our new faculty additions, uh, he came uh, to our department a year ago, Professor Garrett Reisman is a former astronaut, NASA astronaut also with the distinguished uh, career after that in the space industry and which allows us to advance uh, areas in the coursework or focused on human spaceflight. I will talk more about this later. Now, the prominence of our master's program is to significant degree re results to, from, uh, to a significant degree from use of outside instructors, adjunct professors and part-time lecturers. We are in Los Angeles, it is a center of the space industry. We have a leading government centers on the NASA side, uh, such as Jet Propulsion Laboratory and the Air Force, the Aerospace Corporation. We have legacy space companies uh, 
Boeings, Raytheons, Lockheed Martins, Northrop Grumman's, and we also have uh, new space companies, uh, smaller companies that are uh, startups uh, that are building and advancing space technology. So a number of the leading specialists in these companies, they teach in our program specialized courses. And because of that, we developed an unmatched selection of space engineering courses. And this is what built up our program and made it one of the largest national programs in the United States. So this selection of courses and these highly valuable instructors um, that are working in the trenches in the space programs and the space industry and the defense industry. And uh, these instructors provide not only more than, more than practices to, uh, to our students, uh, but they also provide a unique opportunity for students in our programs to network and to get uh, access and to establish connections in the space uh, industry. So the faculty in our department does what faculty in a typical research-oriented university does. Do uh, we uh, work on the research grants and contracts? We teach courses. We publish articles. We also publish books. So again, as in any leading university, engineering department faculty would do that. So we do this. So you see the examples of our of books coming from our faculty. In terms of uh, research areas on campus that is being engaged by faculty on campus. Uh, we are working in the areas of astronautics, space science, space instrumentation, spacecraft propulsion, space mission design, uh, satellite technologies. Uh, our faculty are principal investigators and co-investigators on programs supported by industry, NASA, the Air Force, other government agencies. Our faculty served in the past and still serving on uh, as uh, team members and uh, co-investigators, so we're engaged in the development of a number of uh, space missions, such as Pioneers, Deep Space, Image, Twins, Ibex, and others. Also, we have a student uh, projects, uh, and uh, these uh, student projects are a main attraction for students. Uh, students spend a lot of time there. Our undergrads are primarily engaged in the rocket propulsion lab that uh, sooner or later will probably send a rocket built on campus uh, beyond 100 kilometer altitude, the so-called von Karman line. If these are solid propellant rockets, and our master students are engaged in liquid propulsion lab. And a little bit later, I will say a little bit more because, again, it's primarily master students are there. And uh, if I could get back, uh, just, uh, oh, this one, no, no, not this one, uh, just a second. Yeah, and uh, we, on the left, you would see that the results of work done by our faculty was even on the cover of the science magazine several years ago. So it's, again, we, our faculty, in terms of research, does what faculty in the leading American universities and the schools of engineering do. So we have a very extensive collaboration on campus. So the School of Engineering at USC is a prominent school, highly ranked nationally. Uh, we have uh, top specialists in different areas in various departments. So we have a very uh, intense collaborations with those in electrical engineering, mechanical engineering. We have collaboration in the Department of Physics and Astronomy. Also, our faculty interacts uh, professionally Again, as the faculty in the leading universities would do with other American universities, Harvard, Berkeley, Boston University, Arizona, and others. Uh, we work with NASA space centers, such as JPL, Goddard, uh, with the Department of Energy National Labs, such as Los Alamos, with many other res research and development centers, uh, and also with the major industrial companies. Also, we have a lot of links with the foreign uh, research de development centers and universities in France, Germany, Japan, Poland, so you name it. So now let's uh, uh, switch gears and talk about uh, our specific uh, degree, Master of Science in Astronautical Engineering. Now, the program is specifically designed for 
students with uh, degrees, Bachelor of Science degrees in science and engineering who either already work in the space sector of the space or defense industry or want to work there. And when I'm using the word industry, I use it in a broad term. It's not only industrial companies, but also government, space research and development centers, uh, both on the NASA side and uh, on the Department of Defense and the intelligence community side, and uh, also academia engaged in space. So what is important, and I will talk a little bit more about this, we do not require a Bachelor of Science degree in aerospace engineering or space engineering to uh, enroll in our master's program. We specifically designed the program for students with degree in any area of engineering or science. And uh, this is actually one of the main features in our program that distinguishes it from others, because if you look at the space and defense industry, uh, the companies there employ engineers with uh, various uh, backgrounds. So it could be chemical engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, astronomers, mathematicians. And uh, in order to advance their careers, technical careers, professionally grow in the space industry, as these engineers very often uh, feel deficiency in the knowledge uh, of the space-specific engineering areas. And this is what our program provides. We take students with aerospace background, but also with all other engineering and space backgrounds. We'll take you from here, and we will make you really rocket scientists with a Master of Science degree at the end. Now, uh, the courses in uh, the program combines uh, fundamental uh, science and engineering courses with specialized coursework. And the uh, astronautics faculty on campus primarily uh, contributes to the program teaching uh, these fundamental courses, but the specialized courses are being taught by the pride and the most valuable members of our program. These are adjunct faculty and the part-time lecturers who are leading specialists in the leading companies in government centers in the space industry. And the list at the bottom just shows the names of the companies from where we have faculty working in our program. So if you look at our students, uh, about 40% of our students, they are full-time on-campus students, and the 60% are part study, study part-time, they work full-time, and most of them take uh, courses through Distance Education Network, this is the 60%. So as uh, Megan uh, described earlier, there's no distinction in the requirements to the programs, to the coursework, to the homework. Everything is identical for our online students and for our on-campus students. So the same requirements, the same expectation of the commitment to studies, and the same access to the course materials. So um, there's no real uh, any difference. So 40% of our students on campus, uh, and uh, when we have an on-campus lecture for on-campus students, then uh, the distance students uh, watch, can watch this lecture, the same lecture online. Well, a reality, so let me just tell you how it really works. Fewer and fewer distant students now watch classes uh, in the real time unless the class requires student participation. A few classes do, but most classes don't. So students want to watch it when it is convenient for them in their busy schedules. Uh, and again, a lot of our online students, they're juggling also families and they're very demanding uh, work schedules. So actually, uh, some of our on-campus students uh, also me, uh, skip classes on campus occasionally because they have full access to the recorded lectures. And this is very convenient for all students, where you're on campus or off campus, because uh, certain parts of lectures sometimes present difficulties for students. And you can just pull out the lecture at a convenient time and go through the difficult part as many times as needed. So it's a very, very important uh, tool. And the distance uh, education and the learning through distance education became the way of life in the defense industry. So now if we continue about our students, uh, some of our students are active duty military uh, from various branches. 
and uh, a number of uh, officers, particularly in their early 30s, start thinking what to do when they retire from the service about their careers after uh, leaving uh, the military and uh, uh, joining uh, primarily defense industry, and many of them are attracted to our program. So the background of our students is Bachelor of Science and Master of Science degrees in the all possible areas of engineering, all flavors, also physics, astronomy, mathematics. Uh, as I said, we do not require aerospace engineering as the major and of the bachelor's degree any engineering and any science area would uh, work. We also occasionally even have medical doctors joining the program. Some of them want to be astronauts and uh, they believe that uh, the getting degree in the astronautical engineering could help their chances. So, uh, so we have a very, very diverse population of students. Now let's, let me just talk a little bit about the statistics, what's happening nationally. Uh, first of all, uh, in the United States, uh, there is no national statistics in space engineering. It's, uh, space engineering is combined into the much broader area of aerospace, aeronautical, and astronautical engineering. And in this uh, very large group, our program accounts for about 3, 3.5% of nationally awarded master's degree. So although we are pure space, we're already 3%, uh, so out of the engineers with the space specialization, uh, we are probably 15, 20%, or maybe even more nationally. So we're a very large program. Through distance education, we uh, reach students uh, all over across the United States. If you look at the top left corner, shows the map where our students that got our degrees or studied in our program held from, uh, you see it's practically all states uh, where we have space industry and government uh, space research and development centers. The figure on the right shows uh, the number of the degrees awarded by our program in the Master of Science. And uh, there's a continuous growth uh, during the last, uh, uh, we're awarding more than 40, 40 degrees every year during the last 10, 12 years. Uh, so the total number of our degrees awarded by our program since its inception in 2004 uh, will reach uh, this summer close to 600 after we'll have data for the uh, current academic year. Uh, but uh, we are approaching 600 already. Again, it's one of the largest national programs. Now, uh, two other interesting things uh, for you when you consider uh, which school to go and uh, on the left uh, there is uh, a graph showing uh, the size of the aerospace master's programs in terms of how many master's degree the programs are worth and again these uh, degrees do not distinguish between aeronautical aerospace and astronauticals combined together so our program is although it's a pure space program we are number eight in the country. So it's again, if, if the only space uh, engineer, engineers were counted, we would have been number two or three or maybe number one. It's just hard to tell. So on the right, there's uh, a little bit more about distance education. So the figure shows the size of the distance education enrollment in the different in universities in the United States, how many universities, so um, you know, for so many students enrolled, how many such universities we have in the United States. Uh, one of the universities, Johns Hopkins, uh, stands out, and it's a very large number, but after that, the School of Engineering is number two in the country. What is interesting, that in the ranking of the qualities of the program, uh, the universities with the large number of enrollment, they all have ranking much lower than the USC. So we combine, our Viterbi School of Engineering combines both the size and the quality. We're number two in size in the country. That means a lot of opportunities for students to choose different majors, to take technical elective in the uh, departments other than the home department. But on the other hand, we are the only we are the highest rank 
program among the large programs in the country. So it's a unique feature of the Viterbi School of Engineering. So our alumni, so we have um, uh, on the LinkedIn, we have a group, uh, it's more than 600 uh, students, 700 probably now uh, from a different, um, from uh, during, who took our courses during the last uh, 10, uh, 15 years. So this is very important for networking. Uh, Megan mentioned earlier about the uh, importance of networking for the Trojan family in general, but we have also networking for our uh, uh, students who are focused on the space uh, area, space engineering area. So now let's talk about uh, admission requirements. Um, so we require Bachelor of Science in engineering or science. Again, uh, no aerospace degree required. Uh, the minimum standard minimum uh, GPA in the undergraduate program uh, 3.0 or higher, and the GRE exams and two letters of recommendation. In order to achieve the degree, the students have to take nine courses. Each course is three units. We require four courses. There's a required courses, one in space craft system design. I actually teach this course. Another in space environment, spacecraft propulsion, and orbital mechanics. Then students choose three core elective courses from the list of astronautics courses. In a second, you will see that. And this is the list that made the program so attractive and allowed us to grow and become one of the largest in the country. And uh, then the students uh, should take uh, two technical elective courses that could be either astronautics courses or courses from other departments. And we allow such courses practically from any department in the science and engineering. Master of Science thesis is optional. Uh, it's possible to do it, but not required. Another thing, if you look on the left, it's, uh, there's an um, insert with a photo. This is a liquid propulsion lab where our primarily master students uh, who are on campus, they engaged in the building uh, liquid propellant rocket engines. And uh, this is the program is rapidly growing. They built, uh, fired actually a few months ago, the first 3D printed uh, liquid rocket engine built by a university in, in its class. It's rather powerful engines to power a um, pretty large rocket vehicle. So uh, this is the program where a lot of master students spending huge amount of time because they get hooked up. And also participation in such student pro programs uh, offers also uh, major advantages for students when they start looking for jobs, for those who don't have jobs already. Uh, because again, participation in such a program allows students to get experience working as a team on a project. So uh, this slide uh, shows uh, the selection of uh, courses that we currently offer. And uh, this is, these are the core elective courses in the astronautical program. They cover most of the areas in space technology. And uh, this is something that, again, made our uh, program so prominent. It's an unmatched selection in the American universities. And because uh, we were able to do that, to develop such courses because we rely on our adjunct faculty and part-time lecturers who are leading specialists in these wonderful government centers and space companies that are in the Los Angeles area. We have a cluster of the courses on the top left uh, focused on space systems and uh, space system designs, then the cluster of the courses focused on spacecraft dynamics, orbital mechanics, uh, attitude dynamics, then a cluster of courses focused on the propulsion areas. Uh, and uh, as you can see, spacecraft propulsion, liquid rocket propulsion, solid rocket propulsion, advanced spacecraft propulsion, all possible propulsions. It's almost a comprehensive coverage. Uh, also courses on the various spacecraft subsystems, the power systems, thermal control, and others. And the two areas at the bottom right, these are areas of recent growth. Um, we have already two courses in the area of space safety, and the space safety would become a very a big area, particularly if space tourism uh, would uh, 
become more and more prominent. So, and the more and more commercial companies get into the space activities. So space safety is an area of the rapid growth. We're trying to follow that and establish a, even a certificate in this area in the future. And another area which is linked to the, uh, our new faculty member who, was joined the, who joined the department a year ago, uh, uh, Professor Garrett Reisman, this area in the human space flight. We expect more coursework in this area as well. So it's again criteria for applications. We talked about this Bachelor of Science degree, uh, GPA 3.0 or higher, GREs in two letters of recommendation. Now the application deadlines, I am a wrong person to ask the questions about this. I know how to get to the moon and back, but about applications, it's Megan and uh, our student advisors. And finally, common questions that um, uh, students sometimes ask uh, time to complete the program for full-time students. It's you typically uh, three semesters one and a half year Part-time students if they take one course per year per per semester. I'm sorry one course per semester. It's typically four years uh, course sequence uh, Course sequence is entirely up to students. There's we do not require that certain courses say um, required courses be taken before uh, technical electives. It is up to students. The only restrictions is, for example, Orbital Mechanics 2 comes after Orbital Mechanics 1. Now, way where we require course, sometimes the students are coming uh, with, with their background that they had, for example, uh, spacecraft propulsion or Orbital Mechanics during their undergraduate years. There is no need to repeat this course. The requirement is waived, and instead of the required course in this area, the student will have to take additional technical elective. And as you saw, we have uh, this uh, unmatched selection of uh, technical elective courses in the space areas. Technical electives from other departments, yes, absolutely approved. Uh, then uh, uh, system engineering. Uh, we, as I already mentioned, a number of people who work in the space industry, they're very successful. Uh, they have background other than space, in particular students with even Master of Science degrees in electrical engineering, in mechanical engineering. Uh, they very successfully worked in the space industry, uh, but they feel that their opportunities are limited because they lack the knowledge space in the space-specific areas. So some of them come to our program to get a second master's degree in the astronautical engineering, and this would open the way to the most prestigious jobs of uh, being system engineers in uh, all the major space uh, pro projects. Attending classes on campus by um, our online students. It's absolutely, uh, very often the students who come to Los Angeles on a business trip, they show up uh, in, in the class and just to introduce yourself and see instructors live. So this is just very, very uh, welcome. Now the difference between programs in astronautical and aerospace engineering, again, I would refer you to these publications where we just went to a great length explaining why, why it's that important. And this also fits into the last bullet here. Now, as you, if you work in a major industrial company like, such as Lockheed Martin or Boeing or the Aerospace Corporation or JPL, uh, th these companies support the engineers uh, pursue, to pursue Master of Science degrees. And they can choose basically from any program they want. If they, these engineers choose a certain particular program, that means this program brings a real value for the real engineers working in the real world. So look always at the dynamics of the such programs when you look around, whether there is an interest in industry to a program. Our program fits perfectly in this example. We, for the 15 years as we were established, we were growing and uh, attracting interest. That means that we provide something of importance, of real value for engineers who already work in the space industry. So this is uh, always uh, uh, distance education component allows you to evaluate the quality of the programs that you are considering. And finally, these are 
uh, contact information, obviously my contact information, there are also contact information in the department uh, of, of our student advisors and administrators, and Megan, uh, who is with me today, she's on the right, so she's the key for the, our online students, and particularly if you're considering to get enrolled as limited uh, student, uh, you can start uh, studying like within two weeks. Uh, they, it takes them a couple of weeks to check um, your certain parameters in your application and uh, could clear for start uh, uh, taking classes. I think this is all. I hand back to you. Thank you, Professor Grimman. Um Yes, so I just want to um, open up the floor now to questions. Uh, we did get one. Um, uh, uh, a little bit ago that I wanted to address. So, um, Professor Grumman, the question is, um, this individual has a Bachelor of Science in Aeronautics, and they are wondering if they would need to take more science classes um, before applying to the degree program. The answer is no. No need. Uh, the when the students are coming, and aeronautical engineering is uh, pretty close in its basics to astronautical engineering. Now, when a student's coming from with the background significantly away from, uh, say, traditional engineering, an example would be in, with a degree in mathematics or applied mathematics, we always recommend that uh, the only deficiency could be its lack of physics. So then the students are advised just to go to a community college to take a standard physics courses that are taken by engineering majors in the universities, and then you are welcome to join us. We will, we will take you from there. Uh, the course that I teach, uh, there's the spacecraft design is called, but it's more appropriately, it should have been called uh, Fundamentals of Space Systems. Consider it as a boot camp for our program. Uh, you will learn nomenclature if you're from far away, but the basics are physics and mathematics that the students, engineering students, take during the their undergraduate years, and these courses are basically the same in all programs. The, the few exceptions are like mathematics, sometimes they don't have enough uh, physics uh, training or chemistry, also helpful. But otherwise, uh, uh, there's no need for any deficiency uh, coursework. So if a student is interested in the online, um, pursuing the program online, how does that work if there are lab requirements or projects involved within the course? So the most, uh, the, the, most of the course coursework does not require student participation hands-on. And this is one of the limitations for the program. And uh, for on-campus students, uh, the, in part, this limitation is mitigated by the student engagement in this liquid propulsion laboratory or in other student projects where they can get hands-on experience. But for remote students, all coursework that we have, it's specifically designed uh, with such remote students, online students in mind, so their opportunities are very limited. So it's a primarily standard course without laboratory. Occasionally, courses require some presentations and uh, some um, collaborative effort, and we always very carefully plan such courses. We have adequate resources. Uh, for example, space studio architecting course that we have requires student presentations. It's usually we limit 50% uh, to the on-campus, 50% to off-campus students, and uh, the students uh, talk to each other and have presentations through the WebEx, and uh, so we especially make a special effort to address such issues, but most of the courses do not require lab uh, sections and uh, lab participation. So this will probably be our last question. Unless um, anyone else has any remaining questions, please be free to please feel free to send them via the Q and A. Um, uh, if a student is interested in pursuing a program in astronautical engineering, the graduate certificate and the master's program are an option for them. Why would it choose an, uh, a prospective student choose to go in one direction over the other? So a graduate certificate requires uh, all the requirements for admission are practically the same so that means we have the same quality of the applicants but uh, the graduate certificate uh, requires only four courses rather than nine courses 
And uh, one of the rationales for establishing of graduate certificate was the following. There are students who finish their bachelor's degrees 10, 15 years ago, worked in the industry, successful, or maybe had uh, families that distracted them from getting into the master's degree. And at a certain point in their careers, they feel that they want to go back to school and they want to obtain the master of science degree. But they feel uncomfortable to coming back to studies, they forgot how to study, what it takes, some discipline is needed. They may also feel uncomfortable being in the same group with other students who are 10, 15 years younger than they are. So for such students, we thought it would be a good idea that they could choose courses which, where they will be much more comfortable and not being scared by mathematics requirements and all that, that they might have forgotten by that time. So they will start with courses uh, uh, that uh, where they, their, some of their expertise is much be, would be easier for them. And when they complete four courses and they will get this wonderful graduate certificate, they would say, gee, I'm already half, halfway to the, on the way to the master's degree. And they will continue to master's degree. But also some students, they uh, have a different uh, specializations they don't have time for the, for the full master's degree. They just go and uh, focus on the course work in the area of their interest, for example, spacecraft dynamics, or maybe in the spacecraft subsystems or propulsion. So they get a cluster of courses, and they're getting a certificate uh, sometimes help in the promotion within the companies, and it helps also students to, uh, to focus their studies, because the certificates and the degree programs allow us to help students with the selection of the coursework to achieve their educational objectives. So we did get a few other questions really quickly. Oh, I did, uh, just as a note, I see there is one question about the GI Bill um, and tuition coverage, so I'll uh, address that directly. Um, the question here, though, I think um, could be a little bit more broad. This is an individual who is uh, located in Switzerland who has a, a background in industrial engineering uh, but is currently working in finance and would like to transition into the space tourism industry and is wondering if this would be a good program to pursue that. Uh, so, so we 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 typically we a big program. So we have every year we award forty to forty five degrees. So it's a large program, and we have one or two non typical cases every year. And the case for this particular individual is exactly in the category of such cases. It's even not a medical doctor. It's we have um, um, really um, such unusual cases. So it, it depends what, uh, how this individual sees his or her role in uh, this new uh, coming space tourism or whatever industry, commercial industry uh, related to space. But uh, our degree would certainly help to get the foundations that this person would be able to understand what other people are doing in the area and uh, what are the technical issues and challenges. So the key to be successful in the program to make sure that if the physics and mathematics coursework from the undergraduate Bachelor of Science years is forgotten to refresh it. So this would allow to successfully go through the required coursework and then the Elective coursework could focus on more softer areas, but dealing with the space issues, but maybe not that heavily engaged in mathematics, as for example, spacecraft attitude dynamics is a heavily mathematical area, would be inappropriate, but talking about the space systems or some subsystems would be more appropriate, particularly with the human space flight, because it could be related to the interests. So yes, we, we can handle such students, and we do have one or two students every year joining the program and successfully graduating, if they follow our advice. Great. So um, I guess I, I 
um, that question on the GI Bill was interested. Uh, we have a couple people interested in learning about the GI Bill, so I'll just uh, quickly address that and also send out a link right now to more information. So uh, the USC Viterbi School of Engineering does support the Yellow Ribbon Program. Uh, so if you are eligible for the Yellow Ribbon Program, then um, we uh, can basically provide uh, in, in uh, companionship with the Yellow Ribbon Program uh, full coverage of almost uh, either full coverage or close to full coverage of your degree program. So for those of you interested in learning more about that, I'll be um, uh, sending out a link that you can get more information on um, uh, information on the Yellow Ribbon Program as well as other uh, programs that USC Viterbi and the university support in terms of uh, funding for veterans and active duty military. Um, the one thing I will say is that we do uh, work with all of our veterans and active duty military personnel. So if you are, um, if the programs that you are eligible for are not listed um, and you would like to discuss other opportunities, you can get in contact with us directly where we can um, provide you with even more information on available funding for veterans and active duty military. So um, I will stay on hand here to answer any remaining questions that you may have uh, and chat those over to you. Um, but to wrap up the presentation, I just want to thank Professor Grutman for coming to, out today and sharing information on um, our Master of Science degree program in astronautical engineering. And to all of you that have attended the session live today, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. And for those that may be reviewing the recorded version of this session, thank you for um, listening to the session today. And also feel free to reach out to us with any questions that you may have, um, given that you aren't able to ask those questions.